This problem gives us a baseball that's being pitched. And if we read through this, we see that the pitcher throws the baseball at some speed and his hand is in contact with it for one and a half meters while he's throwing it. I'm going to attempt to draw this. So here's the pitcher's hand. Here's the baseball. Okay. And the pitcher's hand is going to move one and a half meters. And then the baseball flies off of here at 45 meters per second. So we're asked to calculate two things. What is the ball's acceleration? I'm going to call it A sub X, the horizontal acceleration, while the ball is being thrown. So we just call this the X direction. And then in part B, the time of contact between the pitcher's hand and the, and the ball. So how long was the pitcher's hand throwing this ball before right here, the ball finally left his hand and went flying off to the right? Okay, those two things we have to find. Now, as I'm reading through here, I see these two words, constant acceleration. Those are important because it means we can use the kinematic equations that we derived in the last video. And those, let me remind you, are Vx equals v naught x plus Ax times t. And then there's two that give us the displacement. Delta x is half v naught x plus Vx t delta x equals V naught x t plus half a t squared and V squared equals V naught squared plus twice the acceleration times the displacement. Okay, when you write these things down a whole bunch of times you'll have them memorized and be able to use them when you need them. Now, let's start solving this problem by identifying numbers in this problem that correspond to variables in our kinematic equations. And then we'll choose one that will solve the problem for us. So what do we know? Um, we know that the ball leaves the pitcher's hand at 45 meters per second. So that's the final velocity. That's the velocity after this acceleration happens. It's the velocity at the end of the motion. So that's Vx. Everywhere over here we have a Vx, here, here, and here. That's 45 meters per second. We're asked to find the acceleration. Uh, so we don't know that, but we do know that the pitcher's hand and the ball with it move one and a half meters while the pitcher's pushing the ball forward. Well, that's the ball's displacement. That's delta x. That's this quantity here, and this, and this. Everywhere we see a delta x, it's one and a half meters. There's one other number that we can write down that they don't explicitly tell us in the problem, but we can get using our common sense. The pitcher's hand starts from rest. So v naught x is zero. The initial velocity of the ball being held in the pitcher's hand is zero, and so the pitcher is now going to accelerate it from zero to 45 meters per second over this distance of one and a half meters, and we're supposed to calculate a couple of things. Part A asks us to find the acceleration. So what we're going to look for here is a kinematic equation that contains as its only unknown the ball's acceleration. Now, let's look down through the list here. The first one contains the acceleration. That's what we're looking for. But we don't know the time. Because we don't know t, we're not going to be able to solve for the acceleration. We have two unknowns in this equation. So we, we can't use the first one. The second one doesn't have acceleration in it, so we can't use it. The third one has, again, two unknowns, acceleration that we're trying to find, and time that we don't know. So the third one won't work either. But we come down to the fourth one, and we know this. That's 45 meters per second. We'll have to square it. We know this. It's zero. We know this. It's one and a half meters. So Ax is the only unknown. We can use this fourth equation and solve for the acceleration. So let's write it. Vx squared equals v naught x squared plus 2Ax delta x. 
Now the reason for rewriting it here is that we're going to do some algebra and solve for our target variable, the acceleration a. Before I do that though, I'm going to get rid of this term because it's zero and there's no point carrying it along. So the algebra here is straightforward. We can solve for the acceleration a and see that it equals vx squared, the final x component of velocity squared, divided by twice the displacement. And now we just need to substitute the numbers. And we have 45.0 meters per second, square that. And we're going to divide by twice, 1.50 meters. Now when you get your calculator out and solve that, you find it equals 675 meters per second squared, which is a pretty big acceleration. But that's what it is. Okay, so that's the ball's acceleration going from rest to 45 meters per second over a distance of one and a half meters. Part B asks us for the time of contact between the pitcher's hand and the ball. Okay, so now we're looking for T. We do the same thing. We're going to look at our set of four kinematic equations, and we're going to find one that has time as the only unknown. Let's look at the first one. I know this. I know this. Now I know this because I just calculated it, so I can solve for the time t. We could use the first equation. Let's look at the next one just uh, to see what happens there. I know this. I know this and this, so I, I could solve for the time t. That one would also work. Here, I know this. That's zero. I know that, so that term disappears. And I'm looking for this. Uh, sorry, I know the acceleration. I'm looking for the, the time. I could use the third one also. We could use either equation 1, 2, or 3. Time doesn't show up in the fourth one, so we can't use it. So you can use any of these equations you want. Um, let me use two of them. Feel free to use the third and convince yourself that all three of them give you the same answer. Let's start with the first one. Vx equals v naught x plus ax times t. The ball starts from rest. So the time that the ball is in the pitcher's hand being pitched is the final velocity divided by the acceleration. So that's 45 meters per second divided by this number we just calculated up here, 675 meters per second squared. That was the acceleration. So when you put that into your calculator, you get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. 66.7 milliseconds is how long it took the pitcher to be in the act of throwing the ball. Okay, so that's how long it took. Let's, uh, let's also use the second equation to solve for this time. I'll let you use the third one also if you want. I'll let you do that uh, by yourself. You'll get the same answer. All right, so there's the second equation. This is zero, and we just need to solve this for the time t. So there's a little bit of algebra to be done here. Bring this two up to the numerator on this side, and divide by vx, and you'll have solved for t. So we have two delta x over vx. That gives us two times one and a half meters divided by 45.0 meters per second. All right, and when you calculate that, you're going to find you get the same answer. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. If you wonder which of these two equations is the better one to use, the, the answer is a bit of a gray area. They both work. Um, this second one is perhaps a tad bit better. Because if you look at the numbers that we have to substitute in to calculate our answer, this is a number we were given, and this is a number we were given. So we're substituting only given numbers in to calculate the answer. That's usually the best way to go. This approach here is a little bit different. Time is the final velocity divided by the acceleration, and we had to calculate this final acceleration. So because we substituted this number in, if there was any round-off error, 
in our calculation above that would propagate into our answer. Given a choice, you normally choose to substitute only the numbers you were given. But in this case, they both come out to exactly the same answer to three significant figures.